Hi there, this is Julia Malloy, business expert for the design industry. Welcome to day 15. I hope you're enjoying this program so far. I hope it's been helpful. Um, I've been getting like very sweet emails and messages through the blog, so thank you for that. And I'm glad that you're loving it. And I hope that it makes a huge impact on your business and kind of how you're thinking about things and how you're organized and how you're feeling about your business and getting rid of the visual clutter, getting rid of all of the mismatched um, processes and just sloppiness and kind of dialing it in for 2018, right? So our goal is to be completely done with this revamp by the end of Q1. Okay, that's totally doable. All right, we only have like five more days left. It's easy, right? You're almost done. You've been following along this whole time, right? You've been keeping up with these videos, right? <laughs> so anyway, today is um, client binders. Okay, now I know that some of you are digital more than tangible. So when I say the word binder, you're like, oh, we're not keeping binders. We don't do binders in our office. We're digital. That's fine. It is. I mean, we've shifted back in the old days, you know, 15 years ago when I started doing this, there wasn't a digital version of this. It, you know, you had your computer directory, but we didn't have like drop boxes and, you know, Google Docs and things like that. So um, it was always a binder, but you make the choices about what is most appropriate for your own business and your working style. Uh, my opinion is in design, as much as we want to be digital, there is an element of tangible stuff. So depending on what type of design you do, whether it's a lot of custom goods or it's all online, uh, might determine um, kind of some of the choices you make okay but ultimately whatever I say like whatever's on this doc in terms of what the client binder needs to be it can be a file okay um, but you do need a home for certain things and this by the way uh, the client binder is something that's set up same time that your client bin is set up and it's a part of your new client checklist um, that's just kind of like how you set up a project within the first five days of landing a new project these are just the things that get done I go into detail on that in the business blueprint, but for the purposes of this getting organized program, I'm giving you pieces of this. And uh, an important one on that checklist is kind of setting everything up in terms of all your hard systems, okay? All the tangible stuff that you need to just have a home for all the stuff that's gonna be coming out of your office or through your office uh, over the course of the project. And so the binders, um, you know, obviously need to be labeled appropriately. Um, it is per, project and its purpose is to be a place for design ideation. It's for the design team. This binder in particular is for the design team. Mostly your juniors or the project managers um, as they're working on a room or a space they have a home for the things that they are you know specking. It's a list of everything that they need to the, the whole scope of work for that particular for every room every space and um, things that you're considering, things that have already been approved. You need a place for it where you can, that's why I like a binder because you can actually like search and, and look through and touch the fabric and just kind of see everything in front of you versus flipping through images that you can't like compare and just makes it a little bit harder to do that tangible design development work. Okay, so it needs to have a few tabs in there, a general tab, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to have the project documentation tab first and then the general tab, which includes like the floor plan and kind of overall overarching uh, spaces. Um, you know, you put your project worksheets in there um, and then you need a tab for every room or every space as you think of it. So you can have one for every room. Okay, I'm thinking more. I mean, this is sounding more like residential versus commercial or multi-residential um, spaces, but in whatever case, um, however you're dividing up that space, you need a tab for each, okay? So it's simply like the residential, you'd have like, you know, kitchen, dining room, you know, master suite, whatever, have the, a tab for each one of those. So specific things that you're sourcing and putting together. Uh, for that room has a home you put it in there all right it's the design team's responsibility specifically the junior to keep that binder up to date so things that you ex and you source something else and you've got approved something else um, you know those old tear sheets are irrelevant now they get pulled out 
and tossed or recycled. Um, so you keep it fresh and active. And so it's a place for them to go. When you, when you leave the office and you say, I need you to source the fabrics for the master bedroom, uh, source three options of each, um, and I'll be back at 2 o'clock and we can review those. They've got something to look at and they can see the fabric that uh, was, you know, in the adjacent room or some of the, the other things that you've already selected in terms of upholstery, whatever. It's right there in front of them. And I, I also uh, encourage clear sheet covers. So, of course, you've got your client bins. You can put fabrics in there. But if you're in the middle of figuring out what you're going to be choosing for a space, um, it's nice to have the clear sleeves with the the options in there so when you're doing your design development you pull out those clear sleeves you've got the fabric options there and you can kind of put them next to each other and work through that design much easier so um, don't be afraid of those clear sheet covers because they really do come in handy and put a bunch in the back of the binder so when someone needs it you're just pulling it out of the back putting whatever it is in there and putting it uh, in the right section Okay, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I think most of you guys already do some version of this. Um, and uh, I also recommend at the very end having a tab for um, kind of notes. And this is a general area. It can be at the beginning or it can be at the end. But you do need, sometimes you have notes and things that you just don't really have a home for otherwise. So this binder is kind of design development home for everything that you are going to be kind of going through or reviewing and finalizing for the project. Um, it's nice to have one place and not have random files and piles. We're avoiding files and piles with this binder. Okay. And again, it's your junior, de junior designer's responsibility to put this together at the beginning of the project. I give them no more than five days to finish everything on the um, the kind of new project setup checklist and this is a, again a big part of that so it needs to be set up right away so you guys can go ahead and get busy with your project so anyway that's what I have to say on client uh, design binder slash files slash digital files however you guys are doing that um, make sure there is a home for all of these things and they are nicely organized and there is a tab at the beginning for the floor plans and the overarching scheme and a tab for your uh, project worksheets um, and documentation that's associated with it so it's really easy to track all of that okay all right I hope that was helpful for you let me know how that goes for you and until next time be bold and I will see you tomorrow <laughs>